Hi folks, joining us tonight after Rangers won each draw uh, with Dundee United at Ibrox, the Jersey Night post-match reaction. My name's Craig Ray, joined as ever by Mr Scott Bradley, brought to you in association with Forest Precision Engineering. Well, Scott, that was some watch, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Uh, I don't really know what to say after these games now, but I think uh, for me the, the biggest one was at the end, uh, the lack of booze. Um, for two reasons, I think, first of all, there was hardly anybody left in the yeah, stadium. Pretty much Se empty. Second of all, it's just apathy now at this point. People are just not caring to, anymore. I, people are just immune to it now, Craig, aren't they? And yeah. uh, it was just one of those days, of course, it's like classic Rangers. Rangers first half are pretty poor. And obviously second half, Rangers um, equalised. But obviously we'll come on to Dundee United's goal, which was an absolute disgrace defensively from Rangers. But second half, of course, Rangers were uh, the, the better team. Second half, but... Obviously, Cherny got the equaliser then, but it was just overall Rangers. Rangers kept going and going, but they weren't able to obviously get that, get the three points. Aye, as you can tell, the guys at hospitality had a much they better a time, time than yeah, we did today. Aye, so, a good time, we're jealous. Uh, <laughs> aye, I know. Well, to, to be fair, they would have got an extra forty-five minutes of free drinking after Dundee United's team bus was delayed. Um, aye. I don't know, well, it was a weird one because the game was meant to start at quarter two, but I don't think it actually started until about 10-2 or yeah, something like that. Right, like, yeah. And there was no, there was no announcements or anything like that, but uh, we can just put that in the long list of complaints that we've got against against Rangers and Dundee United. Yeah, and can I just say this as well, Craig? Um, are you annoyed? I'm not annoyed. I'm just like, like, numb. I'm just numb to that, that result today. Like, well... T to be honest, you could probably see a mile off. Do you know what I mean? It's like you know, you know what to expect with this team. Um, the performance is the same as we've had the whole year. First half rubbish. Second half, yeah, we were, we were decent. The second half, we created chances. It's too late. You yeah, know, know. We, we can sit here and the manager spoke about it. You know, we had this chance and that chance. It does, doesn't matter. And I, I said before, look, if this was a one-off game where if we're playing in the second half today, is if we're doing that every single week, my blown teams away. And then today, you know, we just can't kind of take a chance and the goalies had a, a great game. That happens in football, but that's not been happening this season, do you know what I mean? I know. Um, and I, I mean, it's just kind of a lot that when we do actually play OK in a half, we, we don't get the points. But that, that's what we're at, it's not about playing well, it's about getting results. And yeah. this squad and this manager at the moment are just incapable of doing that. It's soulless, Craig, it's absolutely soulless. And uh, I just want to touch on, obviously, done the 90s goal. Um, Defensively, that was an absolute car crash. John Suter in proper. Like, I remember a couple months ago, I kind of praised him. Um, I think I was probably going a bit OTT considering the fact that they, they got results against the likes of Dundee and St Johnston and they played okay <laughs> together. But today, it looked like they were like two strangers who had obviously never played with each other before. And uh, see John Suter, Craig, he's been getting on my nerves for a long time, right? But Scotland, he's absolutely phenomenal. He's like John Terry for Scotland. But for us, Utterly hopeless in my opinion. Like, for example, I remember he had a blinder against Portugal, had Ronaldo in his back pocket. Then days later, he effectively costs the game against Kamarnock and we lose at Rugby Park. And then today as well, <laughs> just even like constantly misplaced pass, misplaced pass. He's like positionally, he was all over the place as well. And I just don't understand Suter. In my opinion, I, th I don't even think I'm going overboard saying this. Am I, am I wrong in saying that he's probably not got the mentality to play for Angels? Because since he's came to Rangers, he's been okay, but he's not a Rangers defender, Craig. He's not, not whatsoever. Like, he's okay, but he's got, he can have a good game, but he's got an absolute stinker of a mistake in him. Yeah, but you could say that about every player on the team. <laughs> Probably. Uh, you know, I don't, I, to be quite honest, I don't think any of them have the mentality to play for Rangers. And, you know, Jack Buckling comes in after the game. And I, he does a brilliant interview, he says all the right things. I don't want people to say the right things, I want them to do the right things. Let's talk, we need action, let's and, talk, man. And, we want and actual and see and action now. You know, and that's the thing, you know, Butling, we cannot, oh, he speaks well, you know, he get that, blah, blah, blah. So that, he still makes an error in the Scottish Cup final that leads to Celtic winning it and winning a double. So, and there was other moments last season that he was a bit dodgy as well. So he's he's not prone to, you know, not making mistakes. He's, he's as guilty as anyone else. Their goal, you know, sort of wasn't great today. Right, but for me, that's Proper's mistake. He's trying to be clever, play the offside trap with a Dundee United player. There's lack of communication um, there, right? Lack of communication, but the thing is, even if that guy was offside, there was another guy in behind him that would have scored anyway, which is on Suter as well. Um, but I, I mean, pro Proper for me, that's a, that's a real worry. Like, John Suter, look, 
I, I try not to be overly harsh on him, right? Because as a Rangers fan and all that, that doesn't mean that, that doesn't excuse anything that he does. But he was a free transfer. I, I do think he's okay. So I think value for money, it, it's been it's been okay considering we got him in a free. But proper for the money that he's came in, the experience that that guy's got, and you know, to be the golden replacement, that signing's been an absolute disgrace as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's the biggest issue for me. You know, if we're signing guys like John Suter on a free, you know, if they make it or whatever, it's all right, you've signed him on a free, but you're signing guys like Proper for two million quid who have replaced the best centre back you've had for the last four or five years, and he's not done it either. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, there was lots of errors, errors with that. What about um, Dessels? Well, another I, masterclass never, him in the first half, eh? <laughs> well, I mean, he never. He never. He's done his had, usual. He's done his uh, usual. He, he That's never, the thing, right? See, with Dessels, like, obviously, I've gave up all hope with him, right? Where we all know when he doesn't score, he offers absolutely nothing. He can't hold the ball up, he can't link up the play, he gets bullied by defenders, and obviously, we've seen that first half. He was, like, as I've said, for a long time, he's worse than a man down, pretty much, nine times out of ten, pretty much. Aye, he was rubbish today, but then. Danilo does come on in the second half. Haven't Cherry linked up with him? They did. No, I mean it was it was a great equaliser, but <laughs> even Danilo, right? Danilo has been, is prone to miss lots of chances as well. So it's like Danilo seems to have the hold up playability that Dessers doesn't have. But it, I actually think Dessers is a better finisher. And I mean that has proven in the number of goals it's he's scored. The best that bad bunch, but <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not saying that that's a good thing, but I'm just saying if you're talking about comparison, it's like if you could put both of them together, you'd have a great striker, but it's like we we never seem to have a striker that's got all the abilities that you need in a striker. They're always missing something. But then I suppose as Dessel said, if they were doing that, they wouldn't be playing for Rangers, would they? He wasn't he wrong. He wasn't he wrong. But uh, you just that, that just sums up Dessel as well. Um, obviously, I've had a lot of patience with him, but it's, I don't care if he gets the odd goal here and there, but he, he doesn't do it in big games. Of course, look at Olympiacos, right? He stunk the joint out, but somehow he got a goal. Like, look against Hearts as well, stunk the joint out, but got a goal. But it, it's not enough, Craig. It's just genuinely not enough. I can't go another season with him leading the line. And of course, I think we're talking about it briefly in the press conference about Shanklin, about how, um, how Shanklin's obviously not going to stay in at Hearts um, right after this season, but in my opinion, I would just go for him in January because we can get him in the cheap. Um, he obviously only cost a lot, um, and, uh, and he knows the league inside out. He had a great season last season, and uh, he's a natural finisher. He's someone we need. We do. Uh, we need. We need a. We need a striker, and obviously we need a lot. <laughs> We've got so many other issues in different positions, but up front is one of the big ones. Well, yeah, the, the forward line is, is the main one. Um, for me, a lack of, well, no left wingers, no fit left wingers at this point is killing us because we're playing oh, Brami out of position. And, and he's doing the best he can, to be fair. He's yeah, I mean, doing okay, I think. You know, he's doing okay. He had a, had a decent effort in the first half, but, you know, it's it, this is what we've, we've become now. We're, playing, we're having to play players out of position and, and stuff like that. We're not getting the best out of these players, and the manager touched on all well. We're getting players back for injury. That's all well and good, but we know they're only going to be back for about three or four weeks and then we're going to be back to square one again. Yep. Um, in terms of the striker situation, yeah, personally, if it was up to me, I, I probably would sign Shanklin in January, even though he's not been good this season. I'd definitely take him on a free, but the practicalities are that's not going to happen. We've already got three strikers at the club that are earning good money, so unless one of them leaves, you know, nobody else is coming in. So if, if Dessers, you know, or Danilo leaves, yeah, I can see he's bringing someone else in, but we're one in, one out at the moment, so we can all sit here and talk about what we'd ideally like to do, what we want to happen, but the reality of the situation is completely different. And for me, it's the same with people talking about sacking the manager. Yeah, the manager probably should go. I'm not going to, you know, disagree with anyone on that. Um, but <laughs> realistically, it's not going to happen. No. I don't think it's going to happen until a chairman or a CEO is appointed. Um, you know, we've seen Niels Coppin basically appoint himself this week as a you, yeah. the new whatever whatever position it is you've wanted to go. Whole thing is just a mess at the moment. Yeah. But um yeah. But just, I will say this it. as well I will say this as well, though obviously done United, a lot of people were criticising for the time wasting that and what I think you and I were just saying it off early. Like, when I mean, teams come to high rocks, that's expected. Like well, that's what uh, they're gonna do. That's and I have no problem with that. It's just the fact that the referee is 
Well, he's still not. The way he handles situations like that, it's like, no, he just kind of lets them do it, where it's like, come on, this is a war, now you need to book someone here. Well, yeah, I mean, it's Don Robertson, Don, Don Robertson, the guy that's basically running the show. Yeah, he's, he's running the show. Yeah, 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 he's running the so I think that kind of sums up the referee that he is. Um, but it's the same with a lot of the referees in Scotland. Forget about conspiracies and allegiances. Number one, they're incompetent. Number two, they're attention-seeking, you know what, that are just desperate to go and make a name for themselves and make the game about them. Um, and again, he done that again today. The amount of times Dundee United going down time wasting. You know, we expect Dundee United to do that, that's fine, but the referee needs to control it. Uh, one Dundee United player got booked for time wasting and there was eight minutes added on at the end, yep. seven of which were for time wasting and one player got booked for it. So, aye, that sums it up. But, you know, as I was saying, we, we should have won, if you're looking at this game from, you know, a, a one-off, you know, we should have won it today. But at the end of the day, it's not a one-off. It's been a whole season of this. Yeah. Cramp in the first half, good in the second half, but just no, take, no taking our chances when we get them and it's it, to be honest it's the story of this, this Rangers team yep that's it Craig but I'll just uh, I'll finish off with this as well though in terms of the title uh, it's done isn't it the title's been done for weeks and weeks and weeks <laughs> uh, I mean I think was it 2-1 to St Mirren today uh, yeah 2-1 to St Mirren so, but you know what you know what's so hopefully like, the Aberdeen bubbles burst and we might be able to qualify for Europe next season you know what's you know, actually I was saying this, I was saying this uh, to one of the guys sitting with, me, sitting with me today right I was like you know what's actually so embarrassing and sad right where we're not even focused on Celtic we're actually more focused on Aberdeen like dropping points it just shows you the current state Rangers Football Club are in yeah well it's a bad one it's, yep. a, it's a throwback to seven or eight years ago but anyway we we'll love you and leave you there, guys. Thanks for tuning in as always. From our, our wet, rainy, snowy Ibrox. Uh, the hospitality guys have calmed down. They must have been chopped out now. So uh, they'll be in the taxis up the road. They're probably in it. They're turning it down their sorrows even more. Um, Scott, you're on the pod tomorrow, aren't you? I'm indeed. Yes, I'm um, on with uh, Big Alec and I think Ross. Aye, so that'll be a good one tomorrow as the lights go out at Ibrox. Quite ironically. We'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.